Look, I must say this. Whoever don't press the like button on this video, that means that you most likely jerk off to watching Nyla Rose matches. Look, man, I'm not here to judge. Hey, that's you. Whatever floats your boat, man, I'm not here to judge. But to me, that's kind of weird. So by your logic, you would rather jerk off to watching Nyla Rose matches over pressing a free like button on this video? That's, that's sad, but that's weird. It's like, bro, the like button is free. It don't cost you a dime, man. Why are you jacking off to Nyla Rose matches? That's weird, man. Just watch wrestling. Keep your hands to yourself as you're watching the product. Why are you jerking off to watching Nyla Rose? That's hella sus. Dog, it's not that serious. Just press the free like button. Listen, this video should be over 100 likes. For the people who don't jerk off to watching Nyla Rose matches. I'm like, bruh, you guys are weird, man. Man, oh man, when it comes to this year's Money in the Bank, man, they better add Drew Mack at the last minute or this will go down as the worst ever Money in the Bank lineup in terms of the men. Where is Drew Mack? It's like this makes zero sense. We should call this Mick Carr in the bank. Look, unless Drew Mack is in this match, every guy in this match will cash in on a Mick Carr champion and not a world champion. Nobody is worthy of cashing in on Seth or Roman. I can't believe people are ignoring this fact. I'm telling you, man, if this McMahon was back in charge people would bitch and complain about how weak this lineup is this year's money in the bank it will go down as the worst it will go down as the weakest lineup in history of this contract i'm like wow nobody's trying to bring up the fact that none of these five men have no shot against seth and roman lanes all you nerves are just jerking off to L.A. Knight. Okay, why? You see, you are not true fans of him. Let me tell you a fun fact. I'm a fan of L.A. Knight. Ever since he was on the Indies and, and his name was Sean Ricker. So I'm a day one fan. You are bandwagons. I've been a fan of L.A. Knight since 2010 where was you at in 2010 what do you know about la knight let me tell you a fun fact did you know he was the last guy to be managed by paul bear i bet you didn't know that because you are a bandwagon i'm not i know this guy so this is a weak lineup i'm very objective it's like, listen, I get that Triple H wants this guy to win, but don't make it obvious by putting weak men around him. That's not going to put him over. That might go backwards. If you look at the lineup, it's like, wow, listen, I love Butch. Butch is my favorite guy on SmackDown, but let's be real. He has no shot against Roman or Seth. Shinsuke, nope. Um, Ricochet, nope. Santos, nope. Riddle, nope. You see where I'm going with this? Out, out of those men, who, who has a shot at being a world champion against Roman Lames or Seth? Dude, Seth just won it, right? Listen, do you see a pattern? Do you see a mid-card pattern? All these guys are mid-card guys, not upper. These are mid-carders. So what they are telling you is whoever wins this match, they are going to cash in on Austin Theory or Gutha Faring General. Look, when it comes to Guther, he already said it. He already put it out there. 
he wants to be cashed in on. He's a mid-card champion, and he, and he told Matt Riddle, he wants Matt Riddle to cash in on him if he wins that briefcase. They are telling you whoever wins will cash in on a mid-card champion. It's not time for Seth Rollins to be cast in on. He just won it. Triple H loves Seth. Seth will have a long reign, I think. And nobody's cashing in on Roman Lames. This lineup has zero star power. They should be ashamed of themselves. This is like, I can't believe the people of London are going to pay to see this shit pay-per-view. <laughs> this is a shit pay-per-view. It's like, wow, man. You had a shot to rejuvenate that briefcase by putting Cody Rhodes in this match, by putting Drew Mack in this match. I've never seen a Money in a Bank match with not one minute eventer. It's like wowzers. There's not one man of veteran in this match. It's all Mick Carters. This has never happened in the history of this match where everybody in this match is a Mick Carter. Not an upper, mid card. It's like, where's KO? I mean, give me Sebi Zayn. Give me Jay Uso. Dude, give me Jay fucking Uso. Give me Jimmy Uso. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? Who do you care about in this match that you actually believe will cash in and be a champion? If it's not a Mick Carp belt. That's what I mean. Whoever wins, my prediction is they will cash in on Gutha, Thang, Janelel, or Austin Theory. Most likely Austin Theory. I see L.A. Knight possibly pinning Austin Theory because Theory ain't doing shit with that title. Dude, where are the dorks that said that Austin Theory, he recovered from his burial from cashing in on a mid-card belt? Now, I said mid-card belt, right? Austin Theory cashed in on a mid-card belt. That is a new trend that Triple H will start now. Whoever wins that briefcase, most of the time, they will cash in on a mid car belt if they have no shot at being a world champion. That's why Austin Theory cashed in on a mid car belt last year because that's the new trend that Triple H wants to start. He wants every champion not to be safe. It don't matter if they in the mid-card or the main event. That's why this lineup is so weak. Because this lineup is only going to cash in on mid-card champions. There's no main eventers. Where's Edge? Where's The Miz? Where's Rey Mysterio? It's like, where's Sheamus? Give me some kind of star power that has been around for like five, six years in the upper mid car, something. All these guys are either job guys or mid carters in this match. Like, this is crazy. How can you not put Cody Rhodes in this match? You see, now Cody Rhodes has to wait next year to beat Roman Lames. It's like, that's garbage. That's trash, man. That's whack. So now we got to suffer another year with Roman Lanes not doing anything with this belt. It's like, I'm so tired of the bloodline soap opera storylines, man. This is becoming Bray Wyatt like. For the past six years, Bray Wyatt has done more promos than actually wrestling. The Bloodline and Roman Lames are turning into Bray Wyatt for the, past six, for the past six years. Bray has done nothing but beaten horror film life storylines more than wrestling quality matches. Roman Lames is going down the Bray Wyatt territory where it's like, bruh, 
I understand wrestling needs stories, but this is like soap opera shit. This is like a book that has multiple chapters with the same characters. It's like, bruh, he's been in more storylines with his with his cousins more than his opponents. Let that sink in. He's been in more storylines with his family more than his opponents. His storylines with his family has been more important than his opponent's storylines who he has to face. It's like, it's the same shit, but with the same characters. The first year, it was, was Roman Lanes a heel or was he not a heel? Will Roman Lanes turn on Jey Uso? It was that story. Then it turned into, will Jimmy Uso fall in line? And then he fell in line. Because Roman Lane said, if you don't fall in line, you will be kicked out of this family. So it's, it's an ever-growing chapter of the same story over and over again, but with different layers. It's the same shit, same characters, man. How can you not see it? It's like it's it's just a different variation of the same story. Now, Roman is in a new storyline that has that has repeated two years later. Now, now Jay has to make a choice. Will he fall back in line with Roman Lane? I'm like, bro, this is rinse and repeat from year one. Remember when Jay was fighting not to fall in line with Roman Lames that led to them being in a hell in a cell match? Fast forward two years later, we are back to square one. How can you numbskulls not see this? It's the same shit. That's why he needs to drop his belt. That's what I was afraid of. He was going to repeat storylines with the same characters. This, this is the same shit. Year one, Jimmy was trying to fight for his brother not to fall in line with Roman Lames. Two years later, we are back with that same story. How can you not see that? Eventually, he will repeat his same opponents. That Dude, eventually, Roman Lames will have to come back to facing his old opponents that he's faced for the past three years. That's how long this reign is. Like I said, he's had more meaningful storylines with his brothers or his cousins over his opponents. This is repeating itself. It's like now, dude, now we have to wait. Will Jay fall in line and jump back into the goddamn bloodline. Dude, we've been here in year one. <laughs> remember? Do you remember the goddamn Thunderdome? This is a repeat of the Thunderdome storyline. When Roman forced Jay to acknowledge him as the tribal chief. Listen, I love storylines but I don't love the same storylines on repeat, but in different variations with the same wrestlers involved. That's a problem. That's an issue. How can you not see that? Is SmackDown that trash? It must be that trash. If they can get away with repeating the same storylines over and over again for the past three years, now we are coming back to whether or not Will Jay Uso fall back in line? Even though that was a year one storyline. Which earned him the main event Jay Uso nickname. Now we are going back to that time frame. That's whack. But the point is, this is a weak ass money in a bank lineup. Do you believe that LA Knight will cash in on Roman Lames. 
do you think he will cash in on Seth Freaky Rollins and beat him? Of course not. So why are you jerking off to the thought of him winning that contract? Like why? Like I said, if you look at the lineup, there's only one choice. These guys are going to cash in on Austin Theory or Gutha Tharing Jalal. Because all these guys are Mick Carters. I can see L.A. Knight beating Gutha. I can see L.A. Knight beating Theory. I can see Shisuke beating Theory. That's what I mean. I can see Butch possibly beating Theory. Right? So that's where it's heading. Every guy in this match is, he has enough credibility to possibly beat Gunther or Theory for their titles because it's a mid card belt. But do you believe Riddle will cash in and beat Rollins? No. Roman? No. Gunther? Maybe. Theory? Yes. So this is a match to decide who's going to cash in on one of the mid car champions. That's what Triple H has done. Dude, nobody takes th this contract seriously. It's sad that, dude, it's sad that the women have been booked better as money in the bank contract winners more than the fucking men. Where is the lie? Remember Otis? They made Otis drop that briefcase to the fucking Miz. Right, remember? They made Theory cash in on a mid car belt. Remember? It's like this contract has been a joke. And now, most likely, two years in a row, they will cash in on a mid car champion. But man, this is a weak ass lineup. It's like, I'm shocked. Nobody is trying to talk about this. There's no main eventers. Where is Drew Mack? Where was Cody fucking Rhodes? You need star power in this match. Not a whole bunch of Mick Carters. See, Cody would have brought prestige back to that contract. Dude, nobody cares about LA Knight like that. To see him as a world champion, dog, he's not a star like that. Like I said, he will cash in on a mid card champion. If he don't, he will get buried. And here's what I mean. When you don't win your cash in, that's a burial. I'm sorry, that's a burial. Look at Corbin. Look at Sandow. Look at uh, Theory. I don't care what you say. Austin Theory has not yet recovered. The fans still don't take this guy seriously. He has no heat. What heat does he have? He has zero heat. Nobody believes what he says on the microphone. So, Triple H has not done a damn thing to recover this guy's career. I don't care. I don't care about that match with John Cena. I don't give a fuck. Theory has not recovered. Nobody gives a fuck about Theory as the US champion. Nobody cares. Nobody believes in Austin Theory as a heel. Nobody believes what he says on their microphone. So yes, him cashing in on a mid car belt, he has not recovered. I don't care if he holds that belt for the next five years, bro. He has not recovered. So what is your choice here? All you nerds are trying to jerk off tonight, possibly winning that contract, right? Dude, if he tries to cash in on Seth Freaky Rollins, he's going to lose and he will get buried. If he tries to cash in on Roman Lames, he's not going to win. He will get buried. So by your logic, he has no other choice but to cash in on a mid-card champion. Right? So why are you excited? I'm not. I think Knight 
has, I think Knight has tons of potential. But I just think, dude, that is very anticlimactic to cash on a mid-card champion. It's like, like I said, man, he has one choice, either Gunther or Theory. He can't cash on Seth Rollins. He's not going to win. He will get buried if it's Roman or Seth. You see what I mean? Why are you excited here? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Stu, you be right. This is dumb, man. Make that make sense. You are excited about a guy winning a fucking briefcase that he's not going to successfully win as a cash in against the main champions. Why? How? Why are you happy? That's fucking stupid. But look, dude, look at the lineup. This is the worst lineup in the history of this match for the men. Dude, even do even the fucking women have a stronger lineup. They got Becky. I think they got um I think they got Bailey. They got tons of star power in that match. They got uh what's the name? They got EO Sky. They got star power in that match. Compared to the men, dude, I'm seeing tons of mid-card job guys. It's like, bro, this briefcase is on the decline. It's like, make a fucking splash. Bring prestige back to this briefcase by putting top guys. At least put Edge. Where the fuck is Edge? It's like, give people false hope by putting Edge in a match. I don't care if he wins or he, or he loses. At least give people false hope that he might win. Just to draw some eyes. Something. Dude, where is fucking Bobby Lashley? Hold on, time out. What the fuck is Bobby Lashley in this match? You see, do you see what I mean? This match is designed to beat a mid-card champion and cash in on that mid-card champion. There's no man of winners. Where is Bobby Lashley? Where is AJ Styles? Nowhere. Who do you believe will beat Roman or Seth? in this match there's no Lashley there's no AJ there's no Ray dude there's no Dominic <laughs> what the fuck there's no Dominic there's no Finn Balor at least put Dominic in the match he has heat dude this this is the worst ever lineup ever this is, this is lazy all this is to just put over LA Knight by putting weak men around him. Now, look, man, I love Butch. Shit, okay? I love Butch. I'm not talking shit about Butch. He don't count. I'm glad he's in a match to, um, to actually put himself over, right? But there's no star power. It's like, it's crazy. Triple H has done an awful job, man. The past, the past two years, man, what is he doing? You fumbled the bag with theory, and now you are trying to repeat it by having another guy cash in on a mid-card champion. That's it, I'm done.